Hey everybody, God bless. I hope everyone's <clears throat> doing well. Um, so I got a a question. And it's a really good question. You know, they weren't, they didn't, they're not trying to argue or anything like that. But I I should have really elaborated on this more. I know. Um, I made a video about Christ, right, and um, the body of Christ right? The spirit of Christ changes your DNA, right? And it's true. It changes you on a molecular level. Um, but this person said, I don't want to create a debate or anything. I saw one of your videos that you said that we change our DNA when we are in Christ, but you do not show the scriptures that prove it. I will advise you to quote the scriptures to back up our words we say. And I was like, you know, definitely. And they weren't trying to be, you know, anything, you know, confrontation or anything. It's actually very good. And I should have done that, you know. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I start doing that more often. So thank you who made that comment um, for helping me to realize something that I needed to that work on and do so thank you god bless you um so <clears throat> first corinthians says do you not know that you are god's temple and that the spirit of god dwells in you so we know this you know that's that's a scriptural truth right saying that the spirit dwells in us right so we know that the spirit is in there so the question now is only, does it change you on a molecular level? Does it change your DNA? Does it change the structure of who you are? And um, I'm going to show you guys some things. Um, there is, okay. So in Exodus 15, 26, and I have to, I'm going to do a two part video, you guys, and I'm going to explain to you some things first okay and in exodus 15 it says saying if you will diligently listen to the voice of the lord your god and do that which is right in his eyes and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes i will put none of the diseases on you that i put on the egyptians for i am the lord your healer right so these diseases were affecting, were all around all these other people, and they are, they're around us too, you guys. Um, the COVID, all, all of this, all of these things, right? But the Lord preserves you and protects his own, unless it's his will to not do that. He protects and preserves us. He is our healer. He is the source of our everything, right? So I just wanted to share that first. Okay, so we know to in conclusion on this page, we know that the spirit dwells in the children of God. It's a question of does it change you on a molecular level? And let's go into I have to build up something first. And again, this is gonna be a two part video. So um in in Exodus three it says, And I have said I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Right? So this is what he was telling Moses. Um, and uh, so these tribes, you guys, okay, in the land of Canaan, right? When Moses sent Joshua and Caleb into the land, they came and others to go spy out the land of Canaan. They came back and they were like, we were as grasshoppers in their eyes. You guys, there was literal giants. Like when it talks about um, Goliath, okay, that was, he was very, a big man. He was a giant, a Raphaim, uh, the offspring of the Nephilim, okay, um, and... So these people, these tribes of people, you guys, the Hivites, the Amorites, the Parasites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, they were all, um, they, a lot of them were the Raphaim, their, their parents were the fallen ones, right? If you look into, um, 
Genesis 6, okay? And if you really look into the true history of all this stuff, this is a this is a biblical fact, you guys, scriptural fact. And so you guys when these what the reason I'm telling you this is because when when our forefathers and the Lord himself in many of these situations slayed uh, cuz the Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's army and, uh, army and his chariots he cast into the sea. Um, when uh, the when these people were slain, right? When a hu when there's a human, right? The the Raphaim, their mother was a actual human being. She was a human, right? It's their proge it's their progenitor, the father, that um, was not human. Okay, and again, read Genesis six. Um, but what happened was when these when these giants and these evil not all of them were giants and when they were slain and when they were killed they were evil people right they did not like the lord they go against the lord they wanted to kill um the jewish people they wanted to kill god's people and and um they didn't want to stay they were causing uh they were causing anguish everywhere they went you guys they were not um nice people there they if they were hungry they would eat you man it talks about the land devouring its inhabitants right this is where how cannibalism and things like this was uh propagated and in enlarged throughout the world um but when these when these um tribes right and a lot of them giants when they were slain okay it killed their physical body but the spirit that was in them does not get killed. And these spirits roam throughout the earth, you guys, okay? And sometimes in spiritual warfare, um, they they can get cast into the abyss. Um, and this is where uh, people, um, elites, sometimes do evil spells or evil things to let them out so that they can go out and give them power in the world and do different things but so the the spirit of these uh these tribes you guys they're they're um they went out it's it, they roamed throughout the world and this is what we call an evil spirit right these things do evil to us and they oppress us th this day and age as well right their body has died but their spirit does not die okay so if you look at this, it says Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Well, you guys, these are all, um, these are words. Um, a lot of these are words that are um, medical issues that oppress people, okay? So, like, take, take for instance, Perizzites, okay? Now, look at this. So... This is a type of parasite that you can get, okay? Take for instance, here's a parasite, okay? And it says it's time to enjoy some monster stories. And the scariest monster of all are those that actually exist, okay? And you guys, I have to talk about this, elaborate on this, so... That we can, um, it'll help us understand what I talk about, the spirit of Christ changing us. Alright, it says, join us as we share some tales. Actually, I don't have a lot of time on this video. So, read this. You can pause it real quick. Okay, this is the name of it. This is, called, this is a type of parasite, Toxoplasma gondii. The list as the famous, the most controversial neurological parasite, a tiny protozoan. Doesn't look much more like a blob, but once it makes its way into the brain, it can radically alter the behavior of hosts like rats, cats, and yes, even humans, okay? And it says... T. Gandhi, life begins in cat feces species where its eggs known as alkites or egg cells wait to be picked up by carriers like rats once they are safe and warm in the guts of their temporary host the ocytes morph into tachyzites 
the unassuming little blobs that can really do damage. Those tachyzites migrate to their hosts, the muscles, eyes, and brains where they can remain hidden for decades without doing much of anything. Okay? So, you guys, what this is, is this is, uh, this is how these spirits, these evil spirits, when they go throughout the world, you guys, all sickness, okay, you have to understand, sickness, you guys, comes from um, evil, right? In heaven, there is no sicknesses, right? If, if there wasn't a lot of evil in the world, then these sicknesses and diseases would not exist, a lot of them okay so that they come from evil right because it says the lord is our healer right so these um parasites just like in exodus 13 it's called the parasites these little tiny parasites um because what is in the spiritual manifest in the physical right so it says but when the moment comes to strike the little t gondi tachyzites after their host alter their host brain chemistry so it alters the human brain right just like a, a spirit does infected rats actually become sexually aroused by the smell of cats and leap fearlessly into their calls claws where they die and release tachyzites back into the cats allowing the egg laying cycle to start right and um it says creepy but perhaps Perhaps, but not exactly the stuff of nightmares, except rats aren't the only host in which T. gondi hibernate. Some researchers estimate that as much as 30% of people on Earth, more than 2 billion of us, are carrying the T. gondi tachyzites around in our brains right now, right? And so, you guys, just like it says, you guys, the Lord is our healer right? No pestilence shall come near. Psalms 91, right? These things are, are meant that this is how some evil spirits manifest physically is through these parasites. Just like in the wilderness, you guys, because we are in the wilderness right now, just as in the wilderness, the Lord, um, the Lord and all of God and some of God's people, they had to clear the land of the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Parasites. Well, this is the, um, you guys, scripture gets fulfilled um, in different ways, okay? Like when you read, uh, when you read things in the Bible, right? Like, I'll go to right here. Now, the Lord, um, you guys pray that the Spirit, I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ, that the Lord opens your hearts to the truth and, and to the truth of these scriptures. And pray, you guys, and ask the Lord um, if he will reveal this to you. But, um, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. What happens will happen again. And First John chapter 5, verses 5 through, say, 11. It talks about the blood, the water, and the spirit, okay? And I'm not going to go in and elaborate on all, all this right now. But scripture gets fulfilled, you guys, um, literally the way that it is written out. But it also will get um, fulfilled spiritually, right? So, like, the things that have happened in the Old Testament will happen again through the spirit, okay? And this is what Jesus said talks about um one of the meanings where he talks about the th there's three witnesses the water the spirit and the blood right um and jesus says i have come by uh who came by water and blood not with water only but with water and blood with the spirit as another witness right and and a witness bears testimony to something and jesus christ is the word right? He's the Word made flesh, right? Um, and and it says all three of these things agree with each other, okay? So what that's talking about, one one thing that it does mean is talking about the fulfillment. It's ta it, can, it can translate into the fulfillment of Scripture and in the fulfillment um, of the words in the Bible. And I have to do part two now.